This next feature that I'll show you allows you to specify an output file name directly from the spreadsheet rather than have Templator devise that output file name for you. So let's take a look and see how it works. So here's the spreadsheet that's driving that After Effects project we just came from. You can see here, for example, we have the name, we have the reminder, the month, and the date, and all these are showing up somewhere within the composition that I've been showing you. Now, what we can do here is add a new column called output, and that will allow us to specify a particular output file name that we want for every job. So I'm going to call that output, and for this one, I'll just name it field trip. The next one I'll name it B Day Party. The next one will be Rake Leaves. Okay, so now let's head on over to After Effects and see what this does for us in terms of file naming. Now that I'm in the After Effects project, I'm going to change the row range to match the row range that I manipulated in the spreadsheet. So instead of 13 here, we're just going to stop it at 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and render this out. Now when I render, the render queue will come up and it'll show us what the output file name it's writing to. So you can see here's fieldtrip.mov, that's great. The next one is bdayparty.mov, again, a win. And then here we have rakeleaves.mov. So here you can see that Templator is using the spreadsheet data to drive the output file name. Let's not forget though that the same goes for the replicate feature. So if I hit replicate, you're going to see Templator replicate the comp and when it places it into the project panel, it's going to use the values from that output column. So that comes in handy as well. Let's take a look at what happens if you render out a job that doesn't have any value specified in the output column. So instead of row two through four, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to four through six. Okay, so now when I hit render, Let's take a look at the render queue, and you'll see that row 4 does have rakeleaves.mov, but row 5 doesn't have anything. So what Templator does is it reverts to the old way of devising the output file name. So you don't have to stress whether or not you have a value inside an output column, even though the output column is in your spreadsheet. Just a quick note about output naming. So here, on these first three rows, I explicitly typed in an output name. More than likely, that won't be the case when you're actually doing this in production. You'll want to maybe use values from different columns. So typically, spreadsheet applications allow you to concatenate different values together. So for example, in row 5 here, I want to stitch together the ID value with the name. So what I can do here is just use a function called concatenate. It's right there, so I'll click that. And for my string one, I'm going to choose the ID value. And then I'm going to just go ahead and type in something explicitly, like an underscore. And then I'll do a comma and use the name cell. So then I'll close the function, hit enter. So now we can see that this output is devised by you know, a function rather than explicit typing. And if I wanted to carry this formula to all the other rows, I would just simply you know, click and drag this corner and here we go. So now the output naming is a little bit more, you know, identifiable. 